All right, also with human impact and just out adaptations, all of it kind of rolled into one, uh, is the topic of bees. So I hope that in your classroom you're talking about bees, helping children to not be afraid of them, helping them to know to not kill bees outside because our earth needs them for so many things. So you have a great book, um, What If There Were No Bees, um, referring to the bee movie, maybe showing a clip. It is Disney, so don't show the whole thing, just a little clip of it. Um, but to talk about the bees' impact and why they're so super important. So this goes with adaptations because bees have different adaptations on their bodies um, that enable them to pollinate and to um, help our earth by um, helping our plants and our flowers and things grow. So um, reading your book here, you're also given a bee habitat. Um, it looks like this, you can mount it. I do recommend you kind of mounting away from, you know, a playground area for kids who might be um, nervous or scared or have a bit allergic to bees. You don't want it around there. Um, but this habitat can be mounted so that the kids can go and kind of visit it. It is actually a place that bees will come in and um, rest, nest inside the habitat. So it's a great thing to have out and display for the students to visit. It's also very nice for your environment. Um, to have these, I have a friend who is actually a bee um, breeder and he has his hives. He never collects the honey for them. Um, the hive is actually there just to repopulate the bees in his area. And he was so excited I was giving these out to you. Um, he has a multitude of these across his deck for bees to fill and to use, and they're reusable year after year after year. So these are great. Um, but one activity we're going to work on today is for your students to understand how bees actually pollinate. So the first part is a lot of fun. The kids actually get to design their bees. You can give them very specific patterns where they actually cut out their wings and cut out their bodies based on a pattern. Those patterns and the lesson plans are linked on our third grade website that you're going to receive uh, the link for, or you can let them be more creative. So they'll need a popsicle stick that they're going to use. It doesn't have to be a popsicle stick. I like it so they can kind of hover over a little bit. They do not have to mount it on a popsicle stick. It can just be the actual bee itself that you set down. It's fine. Um, so with the popsicle stick, they will create their bee body. So they'll use construction paper to cut out the bee. Um, and then once they cut out their bee, I mean, I'll be a little orange here. So we'll cut out the body. They can draw on it. They can color the popsicle stick if they want to, whatever they want um, to be able to create their bee. I use them have a little bit of time um, with the bodies. I go over some um, prior knowledge that they have from second grade with how many legs does the bee have, what type of body parts they have, that kind of thing. So they'll attach their bee body on here. They can create some wings. Um, I use simply wax paper for that. You can use white construction paper. It really doesn't matter. Um, so they will, my glue comes out, attach your body on here. Use a little piece of wax paper, create some wings. The kids are going to get more into this than I am at this particular moment. You have your plethora of um, pipe cleaners. So you want to make sure it's important that they have legs on their bees in order to um, have them capture their pollen onto the legs of their bee. So we have some little wax paper wings that we can put on the bee here. They can color on it and do all the all the things, all the things. Okay, add on our sets of legs.
my six legs on here. I've got our V body on the top of it. We don't want to go look like spiders, so we're going to kind of build these up. And make these a little bit shorter. All right, so once they've made their V here, a nice thing, you do not have to use Velcro. So when I say this, um, you can use Velcro, but you don't have to because your actual legs are gonna be enough. Um, but the lesson plan that I'm gonna share with you does say to take a small piece of Velcro and you put the Velcro on the bottom of the bee's body down here. That also helps secure the legs in place, to be honest with you. Um, but once again, you don't have to use this, and you can absolutely just use the um, pipe cleaners, and it's gonna collect the pollen all by itself. But if you're using the Velcro, you just attach it right here at the bottom. So you have a cute little bee, and he is gonna go around and he is going to uh, collect pollen from different things. So um, you can try out and use different materials with the bees. Like if you want the kids to investigate, you know, what works best and you might want to give them like yarn for legs or pipe cleaners for legs or straws for legs, just to see like, why does one work better than the other? It's kind of what you're actually having them investigate. But when they actually go to create and collect their pollen, um, I'm gonna use something that I never use in my classroom, and that is glitter, I have to say. I am not a glitter person at all. It is not my favorite thing. However, I know kids love it, and it does pick up easy if you use the finer glitter on here. Another fun thing that the kids absolutely love is if you use Cheetos, or those really cheap, cheap, nasty cheese balls. And I think that's the funniest thing ever, but you pretend like that's the pollination part of the flower. So the kids can take a moment also, your early finishers, after they finished up their bees, they can cut out their flowers to put on their tables. If you're using glitter, make sure that you um, put something on the table, uh, cover it up so that when you're all done, you just roll up your bulletin board paper or whatever you had, and you just get rid of that stuff. Just take it out all together. So you have a simple flower pattern and you put your Cheetos um, in the middle or put your um, glitter in the middle. Right there, nice and simple. And then the kids are gonna go around and they're gonna visit each other's flowers. The nice thing about glitter is if you use different colors on the different tables. What the kids are gonna find out is as their bees go from this, um, particular flower to the next table to a different flower, they're going to leave a little of their silver glitter on the table that has the red glitter. They'll pick up some red glitter, then they'll go over to the green, and this is going to continue where they kind of start to mix those colors in. So glitter is nice for that part, and whereas the Cheetos or cheese puffs, you won't see that different pollination. You'll just see how it picks it up. So if you're trying to see what type of leg or adaptation works best, the straws, the um, string, or the pipe cleaners, Cheetos is great for that. If you're actually trying to show pollination, I would recommend doing different types of glitter. Uh, dry temper paint um, is also usually available in your art rooms. You won't need a whole lot, just a little bit on each one. So the paint will work really well for that. If you have sidewalk chalk and a grater, you can even do that on there really quick and um, that will work out really well uh, for the kids to do for the different pollination. So it's just a great way to kind of show students how the bees affect the environment or how their personal body adaptations help them to do their jobs uh, better. This is a really fun activity. The kids love the art piece of it and they love the exploration. Once you're finished, make sure that you come together and you really talk about either those body adaptations of the bees or how the pollination works and how that benefits um, the environment in different ways. You can even get into some videos of different hybrid flowers that have come out. There's lots of different roses that have come out of nature uh, because bees have actually cross-pollinated and created brand new types of roses, brand new types of flowers. 
So it's a really interesting lesson for your students that can go way beyond um, the very simple standards that you're covering for third grade. I hope you enjoy it and don't make a big mess with your glitter.